this morning. I know some of you, we, we are a close-knit family around here. We just kind of know each other. Just turn to somebody and say, we know you. Just say, I know you. <laughs> We, we are, we're not, we're not real superficial around here, and I know some of you have looked at me this morning like, what's wrong with asking? <laughs> I've got a few of those looks already. So let me just share with you, let me just share with you that I, 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 thought, of a, I thought of a picture I saw one time of an old truck, and they'd been cutting lumber, cut trees, and they had piled trees on that truck. And the driver was somewhere under all those all, under all those logs. Now some of y'all have seen that. And he's looking through this little hole. That how many of you ever seen a vehicle that was just overloaded? Amen. I mean, going down the road at an angle. Well, I'm loaded today. My heart's loaded. Now I'm loaded, and I'm not going to say overloaded, but I'm loaded with the Word of God. I'm heavy with the word. And so when you see me maybe looking a little different acting, it's all right. Everybody say it's all right. Because I believe God wants to speak something to us today. Uh, we're not going to have a PowerPoint unless they can somehow make that happen as I go along. I didn't provide one. But I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm going to talk partly this morning. I'm going to talk about some fundamentals of spiritual growth. And I'm going to talk about spiritual maturity. I'm going to talk about growing. See, the problem is we got. Sometimes we got folks that are going, but they're not growing. Amen. Amen. See, the heart of this shepherd is heavy today. I'm not only concerned, but I'm committed. I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not real concerned about experiences that you have or I'm not as concerned about some things that happen in your life as, as other people are. Let's just put it like that. I take the call of God very seriously. I didn't want to be a pastor. Some people say, you're a pastor because you want it. No, I didn't want to be a pastor. I want to be a teacher. The call of God is without repentance and it's very real. And it's very, very serious. <laughs> Jeremiah 3.15, just jumping quickly, says this. He said, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's a powerful verse. Yeah. Some people say, well, Jeremiah 3, my Lord, that's an Old Testament scripture. What's that got to do with pastoring today? Well, a couple things. Most versions, most versions, Read Jeremiah 3.15. Most versions say, I will give you pastors. It says, I'll give you shepherds according to my heart. That's what makes it relevant because it's according to the heart of God. This is not just about an Old Testament story. This is about the heart of God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God's heart is that he would provide for us shepherds who would feed. I'm concerned about what some shepherds feed. Amen. We'll just have to let that go the next time. But he said, they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So I want to talk to you this morning about signs of spiritual growth. And I'm going to use as my text, and we'll come back to it in, in, at the end here in a few hours. Everybody with me? Yeah. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 3 and 6 says, I planted, Apollo slaughtered, but God gave me increase. That's my text. That's, that's the fundamentals of spiritual growth. I planted, you've got to plant a seed. A 
Apollo water, it's got to be watered by the Holy Spirit. And God gives the increase and it brings forth fruit. I'm concerned this morning as a shepherd, got my shepherd's hook just to remind you that even when David wrote the 23rd Psalm, the Bible, you know, history tells us, and, and, and I believe if I remember right, he, he, was, he, was, he was king. And I'm sure that he was king because I'm sure it was before he was 30 and he was king till he died at 70. So there's 40 years there. Somewhere in there he wrote the 23rd Psalm. And I can just see him sitting and meditating and remembering. How many of you remember the days of your youth? Yes. I do. I dream about it sometimes. Last night I had an interesting dream when I was when I was a little boy. Me and my me and my brother Tim. Y'all never met Tim, but he was he was a lot more mischievous than me. <laughs> we all are quiet. <laughs> Together we got we got in some trouble. We always always pushing the envelope. You might say we had many adventures, and one day we were. We had rocks, and we was trying to knock out a, a light bulb up in the city light, seeing who could get it. And I'll never forget the man that stepped out on his porch and just about scared the living daylights out of us. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, that's a $120 bulb. Now, I don't know if it cost that then. They don't tell what it costs now. And we ran, and we never forgot. Well, I dreamed about that last night. <laughs> I dreamed. I'm standing at that pole looking up at that light. How many of you ever remember your, your childhood and remember this is what David was doing. David was remembering his, his childhood and his young life. And he was remembering. And I believe I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push it with my imagination this morning and say that David was worshiping and maybe tears was coming down his face. And he said maybe he called for the rider to come and with tears running down his face, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, he is. And I shall not. Yeah, yeah. He was remembering the heart of the shepherd. I don't know when I stood before you that I feel the heart of the shepherd as I did this morning. I have a concern. I, I've told people, I, I, I've had people tell me basically they don't need a shepherd. That's okay. I love you anyway. The call of God is real. Amen. And sometimes shepherds have to reach into the shrub, reach into the to the to the grass and to the uh, what is the word they, they trap in there into the Thank yeah, I'm trying to think of the word briar. Thank you. <laughs> they reach in there and they have to kind of tug somebody out. I would to God that I could help somebody get where you need to be. Amen? I want, to, I want to help you get from where you are to where you need to be. And that only comes by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, to be honest with you, the Holy Spirit is not loud. I'm not saying that He doesn't get loud or that we don't get loud. Loud's okay. But I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit speaks to a small voice sometimes. Yes. Still yes. voice. And he wants to speak to us as that gentle shepherd. Remember what he said? I am the good shepherd. Amen. So again, I want to ask you to let the Lord speak to you today. And so as I look at the flock and as I pray this week over the flock, I find myself, I find myself thinking about what is priority and what is most important. It's not I don't have people divided up into groups. As a shepherd, now I'm going to tell you, this message is not about me. I'm not making it about me. I'm just explaining my, my perspective of where I'm coming from this morning. When I look at this congregation, I don't have the good ones and the bad ones. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord. <laughs> you don't have to worry what list you're on. I don't have the ones that pay tithe divided up with the ones who don't. I, I don't. I don't look at the do's and the don'ts. I, I look at. I look at sheep Amen. who are in need of a shepherd. 
My main concern, and the Holy Spirit is pushing today, the concern I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to remind us today <laughs> is are we growing spiritually? Right. Am I farther along than I was last week? Than I was last year? Am I going or am I actually growing? Am I actually maturing? And we need to take that look, even in Sunday school, she was so uh, good this morning. The Sunday school lesson was great, and I appreciate that. And we talked about, part of the lesson was talking about taking an examination. And we're here today to take an examination. We're not here to focus on the regrets. We're not here to focus on the negative. We're not here to focus on what we did wrong in, in, in 89 or in 95 or wherever it was. Or last week or last month. We're not here to focus on that. How many of you know that God's grace is sufficient? Yes, His mercy is everlasting. Yes. I'm here to tell you that, uh, that God is a forgiveness. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Yes, amen. So it's not a time to focus on the negativity. It's a time, it's a time to say, Am I growing every day? And so I begin to think about signs of spiritual growth. What are signs of spiritual growth? Now, uh, when a lot of times, I mean, we've been here 15 years. We're in our 15th year, and now I think about, I've watched, I've watched some of these kids grow up. Okay. I mean, I, I've watched, they were little, some of them infants, some of them toddlers, and, and now they walk up, and it's like, hey, <laughs> where did you come from? Anybody ever speak to a, a child or to a family and say, Hey, what's going on? And the parents say something like this. She's growing like a weed. Well, in the church, we don't want to be weeds. <laughs> I'll preach on that later. <laughs> but we want to be growing. We want to be more mature than we were last year. We want to be progressing. And the enemy wants you just to park it somewhere. The enemy wants you just to pull out on the side of the road and set up camp. Mm -hmm. While everybody else is going by, he wants you to roast some hot dogs and, 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 just, and just wait on the rapture and just kind of hang out and, and tell him to put up a sign that says, I'm a Christian. I'm church of God. <laughs> I'm this or I'm that. I'm here to tell you it's time to Put up the tent. And it's time to grow up. Amen. It's time for all of us to be involved in the process of spiritual growth. Putting the past. Paul said, I have put the past behind me. I've got my eyes on the prize. I, I'm, I'm going forward. So I begin to think about some signs of spiritual growth. These kids, I mean, when these little boys walk up to you and they've got a mustache. <laughs> They're not little boys anymore. And so we, we see signs of people growing older and those of us that have passed middle age and, and I, I, I'm getting letters from the double ARP. I, I, I'm having people ask me if I want to use my senior discount. And the hair recedes and all of a sudden there's signs of growth. Signs of progress. Things that I look for or things that I see. It's not that I'm constantly examining. But the truth is I'm a shepherd. I'm watching the sheep. One of the first things that I'm always looking out for is, is there a passion for worship? I'm talking about signs of growth. If you're growing in the Lord, if you're growing spiritually, there is going to be some degree of passion when it comes to worship, you're not always going to worship like somebody else. That's fine. You're not always going to be uh, be loud. That's fine. You're not always going to run the aisle, but you might one day. <laughs> uh, there are biblical things that we do to worship God. We ought to raise our hands when we can. We ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And this is your 
shepherd has come by here today to tell you that we need to worship God with our offerings. We need to worship God with musical instruments according to the Word of God. We need to worship God with our physical posture. He said, come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Psalms 95 and 6. Some of us worship God the same way we watch the news. See? Some of us don't have any different posture when we worship than we do when, when we're doing other things and, and involved in other activities. Worship is important. We worship the Lord in our songs. He said, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. He said, worship in spirit and in truth. So when it, we talk about signs of spiritual growth, one of them is there's a passion for worship. I just want to ask you, if, if, if there was a way to measure passion, how is your passion for worship doing? I took my sugar this morning. I didn't like it. I ate some rice yesterday. Wasn't supposed to eat that much rice. So I got the meter out this morning. I wonder if there's a meter that we could use today to check the passion of our worship. See, it's not important. It's not as, impo as important for me to check your worship as it is for you to check your worship. That kind of sounds like the doctor. When the doctor says, it's not important for me to check your sugar, it's important for you to check your sugar. <laughs> I love it when people that love me ask me, how's your sugar running? And I hesitate and they say, you ain't even checked your sugar. <laughs> I wonder sometimes, how is our worship? <laughs> worship begins in the heart. The truth is you can go to church and raise your hands and never worship God. The truth is you can sing a song, whether it be a red back or a brand new chorus, you can sing a song and never really worship God. I'm talking about what's going on inside of you. Let's measure this so we can work on this. Why? Because it is a sure or a significant sign of spiritual growth. Jesus said, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. I hope we've got a house full of worshipers. Once again, it's not that I want everybody to reach a certain plateau. On this interstate, on this highway of life, we're all in different places. But as a shepherd, I want to see you going forward. You know, how many of you have ever been backed up in traffic? That's not fun. I'll just be honest with you. It's not fun. Whatever you're driving or wherever you're at, it's not fun. Amen. I've, I've been in, backed up in traffic in cars, and I've been backed up in traffic in big trucks with strong clutches. <laughs> I've been backed up in traffic to where my, my leg was burning from clutching that thing. I've been backed up in traffic for hours at a time. And I see people backed up in traffic when it comes to their spiritual journey. But you know what? You're going to make it. Amen. I've never been backed up in traffic that it wasn't temporary. Right. 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 Go forward. Yeah. You got to keep going. You got to be patient. I mean, when you're sitting in traffic, there's certain things that you're going to have to do eventually. Somebody say amen. Amen. And and you you'll make it. You you you're gonna get there. You're gonna make your flight even if it's the next flight. I'm just here to tell you that when it comes to the spiritual journey, we have to keep walking, we have to keep going forward. It is the absolute desire, it is the load that's on me this morning to tell you that the, this heart of a pastor is concerned about one thing, and that is that you are going forward. When you're not going forward, you're sitting still. And when you're not sitting still, if you're not careful, you're sliding back. Amen. Amen. Signs of spiritual growth 
is not only our worship, but I also look for and see signs when it comes to loving God and loving people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're growing in the Lord, you're going to love, listen, <laughs> listen to me. God's easy to love. Yes. I'll be honest with you, I don't think the biggest challenge is loving God. <laughs> I mean, we just sing a little bit about Calvary and what he did for us and the blood that he shed and the sacrifice he made. And I can pray now. I'm not, I've been angry with God in my life. I know what it is to be, to, to be misled or distracted when it comes to my love for God. It don't take me long to fall back in love with Jesus. I'm telling you, I love him. Amen. The, the, the real test comes when it comes to loving each other. Right. See, God's called us to love each other. <coughs> Even Democrats, we're supposed to love Democrats. <laughs> Democrats, we're supposed to love Republicans. Yes. <laughs> we, we're supposed to love, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just going to throw this out there. There's nothing, there's nothing that bothers me more than to see a spirit of racism in the body of Christ. Yes. I'm telling you that, that old spirit, people say, well, it's not a problem. It's a problem if it's a problem in you. That's right. If, if income, I'm telling you, when you're growing in Christ, you're going to love God and you're going to love people. Yes. Amen. I can say a lot more there, but I feel the urge to go on. You just got to love people. Say, well, I can't help it. That's the way I was raised. I guess I'm going to preach on it then. <laughs> I, Pastor, I can't help it. That's the way I was raised. My, my daddy was a racist. My grandpa was a racist. Well, it's time for you to stop the flow. Yeah. It's time for you to stop the flow. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to say to people that, that have racism in their heart, I just want to tell you, you're smarter than that. You're better than that. You tell me you want to look different on somebody because of the pigment in their skin. You tell me you're going to look at somebody different because of a different culture. Honey, we all come from different cultures. And I'll tell you this, we've all got different pigment in our skin. That's right. Amen. God help us in the body of Christ. When it comes to loving God and loving people, He, he, he tells us. And Deuteronomy, and he said, If there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of the gates of the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your poor brother. But you shall open your hand wide to him and willing, willingly lend him sufficient for his need. Now the scripture says that when we lend to the poor, we're lending to God. Woo, if I lend to anybody, I like, I like lending to God because he pays a good interest. <laughs> Uh, people that are growing in Christ, they don't turn up their nose when the guy out of Walmart that says, we'll work for food. You say, Pastor, that man's a liar. Well, guess what? We're supposed to love liars. Amen. God don't expect me. Well, let's just talk about what God expects us. Let's don't come up with conclusions. Let's don't lean upon our own understanding. He said in Deuteronomy, for the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. And Job, he said, to him who is afflicted, kindness should be shown by his friend. <laughs> Even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. So loving God and loving people is a sign of spiritual maturity. When you show that you're really not loving God and loving people, you're just showing that you're going, but you're not growing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Proverbs 3, 27 says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do so. I can't, I can't fix all the problems of a homeless man. But I can be kind to mm him. -hmm. Yes. I had a lady call me this week. I'll be honest with you, I was 
I was enjoying a meal with some with a family in this church. I was busy, to be honest with you. I could have ignored the call. I took the call, and in a few minutes, I began to understand they're looking for somebody to preach their mama's funeral this afternoon at 2 o'clock. I could have easily said, I don't know you. You, you. I could have easily said, you sound a little different. I could have easily said a lot of things. But you know what? We need to love those. Amen. Amen. We need, I'm not here to toot my horn. I'm just here to tell you that sometimes loving people means you've got to sacrifice. Amen. I have plans after church today. And I'm going to somehow make it all happen. But I'm here to tell you, I'm going to go to Rainsville and I'm going to preach the best I can for a family I don't even know. Why? Because we're going to love people. Amen. We go to the jail and we love people. Did they deserve to be in jail? Yes. Don't get hung up on, on who deserves to be there and who doesn't. If they in jail, they probably deserve to be there. But a lot of us might deserve to be there. That's right. Yes, sir. Gotta love people. Amen. People that are different than us. If, if this church is known for anything, I so desire for it to be known for loving people. Yes, sir. We'll love you. The Bible says a friend loves at all times. A brother is born for adversity. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. There's the scripture after scripture. These are signs of spiritual maturity. He said in Luke 12, sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money back. I'm telling you, some, some people, and I may get my shepherd's hook. I don't want to remind you when I'm saying this, but this is my shepherd's heart. Some people think that it's all about them. Some people think that it's all about what God can do for me. And I, I made the money. I, the money is mine. Honey, let me tell you something. It belongs to God. Amen. And we need to remember that part of loving people is giving and sacrificing and being kind. Fact is, if, if your gift is not significant to you, then it's probably not significant to God. Amen. Some things are easy to give. It's easy to call one eight hundred number and give a few dollars and walk away and say I feel better. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Let's talk about another sign for spiritual growth. Not only are we loving God and loving people, not only. Not only do we have a passion for worship, but if we're really growing in the Lord, then we're going to have a hunger for holiness. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. I'm probably just going to end here because there's a lot that needs to be said here. I am a believer in biblical holiness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't much like man-made holiness. I'm not much on tradition unless the tradition is Bible. Right. Right. You want to talk about a holiness standard? Show me the word. <laughs> not the money, the word. Show me the verse. You want to talk about something being right or wrong? That's great. Show me the verse. Don't talk to me about tradition. Don't talk to me about what mama did and what granny did. And, and, and show me the Bible. Yes, These young people deserve to know what the scripture says. They deserve to know what is right and wrong based on the word of God. There's a hunger in my heart for biblical holiness. He said in 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I want to tell somebody here today, it matters what you say. 
Somebody, somebody walks up and they're talking loosely. Somebody walks up and they're using language they shouldn't use. At the very least, I'm going to tell you, that's a sign to me that they're not growing spiritually. Amen. When you grow spiritually, you will not want to use the Lord's name in vain. Amen. When you're growing spiritually, you won't talk filthiness. When you're growing spiritually, you won't be involved in fornication. You won't be involved in premarital sexual activity, sex outside of marriage, which is adultery. Whether it be heterosexual or homosexual, you will not be involved. And when you do, you will beg God to forgive you by His grace. And you will walk in the grace that He's provided. And you'll begin to grow. And you'll begin to see things and say, I'm not going that direction. I'm not going here. I love what somebody said in Sunday school. Sometimes you've got to turn the television program off. Somebody's talking about in Sunday school about watching certain programs. You said, Pastor, it's not a sin for me to watch that. No, but listen, number one, number one, it might be. Yeah, it might be. According to what it is, and it's according to it's according to your motive and according to your heart. Don't make me preach strong this morning. I'm here to tell you that if you're watching it for the wrong reason, it's wrong. Amen. 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 If you're watching it to see what you can see, mm -hmm. sir, you need to look at your wife to see what you can see. Amen. 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 You need to be faithful. But if you watch and you and I listen to certain things, it might lead us down a path that we do not need to take. Has anybody ever got lost? Come on, guys. Come on. Yes. Your shepherd's crying out to you. Flee the very appearance of evil. Yes, the shepherd will leave the 99 to get the one. Yes, thank God for his grace and the hook, the shepherd, the great shepherd. Thank God. But you know, sometimes we get lost in a part of town we shouldn't have been in to begin with. That's right. That's right. See, I ask you if you've ever been lost. I, I've, been, I've been lost a few times, but usually it's because I've turned off an exit that I shouldn't have turned off. That's right. If you don't know it's the exit, then stay on the interstate. That's good preaching, brother. I mean, if you don't know where you're going, pull over. Get out the map. Don't depend on the GPS. She will mislead you. Don't make me preach on the GPS. I'm just going to fix this right quick. I don't. Uh, I had a GPS and she misled me, so I changed her over to a him. <laughs> it didn't help a bit. I got more lost than I was in the <laughs> I was delivering a, a little love for Matthew C. a few years back. I had to go to Portland, Tennessee. I left before the sun came up, drove to Portland, Tennessee, and I drove exactly where that GPS and I had a truck with a long trailer on the back and some machinery and I went down this it was taking me it said your destination is on the right and I thought well maybe they got a factory out here in the middle of the country <laughs> and I pulled down that road you have reached your destination and I kid you not I could not see one house I could not see I saw plenty of cows <laughs> And I was down a little skinny road and had to back out. I couldn't even turn around. That's what the enemy will do. He'll take you down a road you've never been on. He'll get you stuck in a place you've never been. You're going to find yourself in trouble. And then you're going to wonder what caused this, why this. You and I need to grow spiritually. And we need to understand that if we're hungry for holiness, then we're not going to get filthy. We're going to stay clean. Yeah, the Bible says that him that hungers after righteousness, what? Yeah. Just stay hungry for God. Quit playing with the world. My Lord, I'm, I'm going to preach myself in the altar. 
Sometimes I want an Oreo. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Sometimes nothing's going to do but, but a Pop-Tart. <laughs> something, something sweet. And the whole time my conscience is saying, don't you eat that. Don't you eat. Go over and get you a piece of golf now. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Never has broccoli tasted so right. <laughs> we must be hungry for God. Yes. Amen. And when we're hungry for God, He will not mislead us. When we're hungry for holiness, He will not mislead us. You will not be lost. You will not be lost somewhere not knowing. No, He said that if we would acknowledge Him in all of our ways, that He will direct our path. Yeah. I've been to places in my life and I thought, my God, I, He didn't send me here. And you're right. You find yourself away from Him. God didn't send you. That's right. You stay hungry. This is a this is a significant. Say a sign or a signal. Folks, I see people sometimes and they don't they don't act like they're hungry. You know, when people are hungry, they act different. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, some people get cranky. Yes, they do. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you folks, there's a lot of us in this room who haven't been hungry in a long time. <laughs> That's why God calls us to fast. Part of the reason that God calls us to fast is for us to be reminded of what it is to be physically hungry. And then when we are physically hungry, the Holy Spirit transitions that in a way that only He can. And all of a sudden, our heart is broken. And all of a sudden, we want God more than we want food. All of a sudden, this is a hunger for holiness. A hunger for righteousness. <clears throat> this morning, I, I want you to examine your heart. And I want you to think with me. Am I showing any signs of spiritual growth? God forbid. But I, I feel like saying this today. God help us. God help me right now. God forbid that somebody's here today and you're in the same place that you were 10 years ago. Spiritually. We got folks living on experiences that happened 30 years ago. Preacher, brother. Hungry for holiness. Ephesians 5 and 3 said, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you. He said in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I want to tell everybody, uh, we're going to move on. It matters what you say. Listen to me. It matters what you wear. We don't hear this preached much anymore. And I, I will tell you that no doubt that at some point, some time, and some place by somebody, there's been some clothesline religion preached. But I'm going to tell you, that doesn't change the truth that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. I was at camp meeting last year, and there, 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 was, there was young women dressed on the stage that I couldn't even look, I couldn't even hold my head up. I had to hold my head down. I'm going to tell you, you, he can write me a letter. He can tell me I'm wrong. But I'm just here to tell you God's word is true. We need to dress right. Amen. Amen. We have a habit in the church of God of picking on the women. I know some guys that need to dress right. Amen. We need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. I'm talking about being modest. Yes, Amen. Being modest. Amen. You put on clothes and you want to attract the opposite sex. You're wrong. You're wrong. Right. Scripturally, you're wrong. Yeah. I've had people full of the Holy Ghost say things like this. Well, God gave it to me. Oh, really? And, and you're going to use that as an excuse to seduce, 
Yeah. No, it matters what you and I wear. Amen. Guys, gals, let's dress like holy people. Amen. Let's dress like godly people. I'm not talking about being weird. I'm not talking about. I'm, I'm not talking about. I'm not. Listen. What? We're not Amish. But I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes the Amish people put us to shame. Amen. Because they at least got it covered up. Amen. 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 I get on Facebook sometimes and it is amazing to me. Yeah. Facebook is the home of self-promotion. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say sometimes, honey, I'm not interested in what you show me. <clears throat> I'm not interested in what, and you shouldn't be showing it, and you and I shouldn't live that way. Folks, I'm telling you that if you're growing spiritually, you're going to dress modestly. It's just that simple. Amen. Amen. You've got to be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. Yeah. Careful how you act. It's going to affect your attitude. When you're, when you're hungry for holiness, you're not going to get in road rage and give side language to the man next to you. God ain't got nothing to do with that. Some of you visitors look at me. I preach plain. I believe Plain spoken is easily understood. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that preacher is losing their temper and cussing. I'm, folks, I'm just here to tell you, you I'm open. I'm an open book. I told you about throwing rice cream on a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I pretended that wasn't a hole in the side. No, no. no, it wasn't. I've heard about people losing their temper and carrying on. It's not okay. We need to put it under the blood. Go on. Amen. Keep growing. Let me mention a few others. If you're growing spiritually, there's going to be an eagerness to serve. Right. There's going to be an eagerness to serve. You're going to have a servant's heart. If you're growing spiritually, there is going to be growth in your prayer life. If you're growing spiritually, you're going to want to share your faith. Shane, in just a couple sentences, I want you to stand and tell us. I mean, just tell us the, 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 the Reader's Digest version of how you got saved. I put my mom through uh, torment and I told her to just take me uh, somewhere. I want to be with God and nature. Didn't know uh, what I said, how, what I meant. At the time, but he did, and we went through Scottsboro. That wasn't no good. I said, let's go a little further. We ended up in the Smoky Mountains. She dropped me off, and uh, uh, living under a car under a picnic table. And uh, the ring the church got in the came up there, and uh, it's put me and them. You know, we crossed paths. I met them. And at the devotion, I didn't get saved then. The Lord dealt with my heart. And I said, is there any way I can move over here and get a place to stay and a job so I can get on my feet? And so I called my mom. She come back to pick me up. I moved over here the next weekend. Got saved. And he's called me to save the world. Now, <laughs> since then, tell, me, tell us some of the countries you Travel to and share the gospel. Uh, Bolivia, Egypt, India, Haiti. Uh, you mean you went to the Philippines? Philippines. Yeah. You went to the Philippines and got off of an airplane and just walked off into the jungle. That's what I heard. This is how you share your faith. And I'm telling you that if I was lost and I'm not, if I was looking for meaning and looking for purpose. And he's telling this story about living under a picnic table in the Smoky Mountains and, and God finding him and look at him and God saving him and giving him a beautiful family and God sending him around the world. Now you've got my attention, see? You've got my attention if, if I'm somebody that's all supposed to, we've got to share our faith. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Sharing our faith, a lot of times just means you share your story. Amen. This means you share your story. I wish I had time. I'd just get people to stand up, tell me how you got saved. How is it? Some people went to a revival and heard a preacher preach the Holy Ghost convicted them. They ran to an altar. Now, I'm here to tell you, it's not always that way. If you're here today and you need to be restored, you're here today and you need to come back to God, you're here today and you need to pack up the tent and move on, then do it. Let's do that. Let's, let's get back in line and let's begin to grow spiritually. Well, I'm concerned about people that have been in the church for years and years and at the very end of their life, they just let it go. When you're growing spiritually, you're going to have just an overall well-being. You're just going to look better. I mean, I, I, I was with a guy the other day. It's been two or three months now in a work setting. I just kept taking a second look. We were doing, I was just visiting there, really. I just finally went to him and called him by name. I said, what's wrong with you? You're not cussing? You got a smile on your face. You're just about jumping around here. I said, what's going on? You got to say, see, there's going to be a difference. There's going to be a difference in your talent. I feel like telling somebody here today, you don't have to get it all figured out to get saved. You just have to trust the Lord. 